G'day, and we're back. And this time we're going to do Passes Through Mirkwood. And just for fun, we're going to do it with a single copy of Core. So, hide everything. And what do we want? What do we want from this quest? Basically, there's no songs. So, we want to have healing. So, I'm going to put in... Denethor, and we want to have Eleanor to control the encounter deck, and I guess we're going to use Aragon because we need we need some power in the questing area. I guess it would be nice to use just that the the questing stuff is quite hardcore. I guess we'll use I guess we'll have to use Aowen. Okay, we're gonna use Aowen, Denethor, and Aragon. Okay, so what have we got here? Let's just go to filters. Okay, so we want three Gandalfs. starters what else do we need we can only have one of them because we're only using a copy of core one copy of core I think there's only one of those how annoying dark knowledge forest snare well I'll take two of them trick of Lorien take two of them self-preservation take two of them yep we'll take two of them no no, yes, we'll take two of them. Yes, two of them. No, two of them. One of them. Two of them. Three of them. Two of them. Okay. Lowering Guide, Northern Tracker. Oh, we can only have two Northern Trackers. Ordering Talk, we don't care about. Yeah, we'll have two of them. Oh, there's three of them in the deck. Why don't we just put three of them in? Ember Hammersmith, two. Glorin, two. River Song. Mine of the Iron Hills, two. What are we at? 44. Put three of these guys in. Do we need one more? Okay, we'll put in that guy. It takes us to 52, and we'll just take out these orcs, what do you reckon? Okay. So, there we go. And we are going to save that as one by core passage through Mirkwood export okay so let's uh, set up the game much that once was is lost for none now live who remember passage through Mirkwood load entire deck to me deck editor uh, where is it browse one by core load to player zone heroes load to heroes okay we're back 
and it's all happening. Firstly, we have all these ridiculous quest cards. One, two, three, and four. Reveal to all, we need a spider, and we need an old forest road. And shuffle and heroes. Where's our heroes? There they are. Shunk. Okay, they get resource each, and we are twelve twenty nine. Twenty nine. Crazy. Okay, so that looks like we're set up. So I'm just going to save this in case there's some kind of catastrophe. Save core dash passage through Mirkwood. Then I'm just going to clear. And I'll see you in the next video. Okay, so here we are. Let's see if we can do this. Let's uh, shuffle the encounter deck. Oh, it's already been shuffled, and shuffle the player deck. Sweet. Okay, so we're ready to rumble. Um, what have we got here? Well, I think this is a no-brainer. We are going to quest like this, so we're going to quest for six. One, two, three, four, five, six. There is currently three in the staging area. And out comes the encounter card. Boom! And it is a second old forest road. Could there be anything better than that? I don't think so. Okay, so we travel to old forest road, which of course, oh wait, hang on, that's a uh, that's uh, plus one. So, oh, I didn't read the thing. Oh, I'm not even thinking. Okay. Flies and Spiders, The Passage Through Mirkwood. You are travelling through Mirkwood Forest, carrying an urgent message from King Thalandral to Lady Galadriel of Lorien. As you move along the dark trail, the spiders gather around you. Bum, bum, bum. That's this motherfucker, and this is the dark trail. Pretty cool. Okay, flick. The nastiest things they saw were the cobwebs. Dark, dense cobwebs with threads extraordinarily thick, often stretched from tree to tree or tangled in the lower branches on either side of them. There were none stretched across the path, but whether because some magic kept it clear or for what other reason, they could not guess. Okay, yeah, so we've completely made a wrong turn somewhere. But we did uh, actually get two progress tokens on that location, uh, that quest. And now we're going to travel to the Old Forest Road, which of course readies Aragon. And down comes the spider. Now we're going to defend with whatever his face is called. Denethor. And boom! Each player must choose and exhaust one character he controls. That's kind of lame. Encounter discard. And I'm going to do the encounter discards like this. I've decided it's a bit easier. Boom. Oh, let's uh, reveal that. Look. <laughs> okay. And so he's attacking for two, he's defending at three, no damage. Oh, holy shit, I haven't drawn my hand yet. <laughs> That's a bit uh, stupid. Reveal to owner all. Okay, we're going to keep this hand. And so we draw one extra card. And that's it. Okay. That was pretty crazy. <laughs> I played that entire turn without drawing a hand. Goes to show you how, how how used to not actually ever casting a card I am on uh, tricolor decks solo. <laughs>
Okay, so refresh all. We go up one threat to 30. We get turn two. Ooh, turn two. And everyone gets a resource. Uh, also, we only have one threat in the staging area at the moment. Okay, so what have we got here? Well, for starters, well, this is a pretty good opening hand. But let's uh, pay the two resources from Aragorn. Oh, I may as well not. Pay two resources from Aragorn. I'm going to place Steward of Gondor on him, which we then, of course, can tap, and he retains his two his two markers. That means he can ready himself pretty much for free for the rest of this game. We are also going to spend two resources from uh, Denethor and put out Geloowen. 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 I need to send an email to Fellowship of the Cards and get them to teach me how to pronounce everyone's freaking names if I'm going to do these videos. Okay, so Glowin's out. Got a chainsaw in the background. Awesome. And now it is time to quest. We are again going to quest just with these guys. So we're questing for six, and I pay... A resource from Aragon and ready him. Okay, let's see what comes out. It is another annoying orc, but that is only three in the encounter deck. So that is uh, only three in the encounter deck. We're questing for six, so we get three progress tokens, which clears the old forest. which is awesome and now we travel to do we want to travel do we want to save that old forest for some kind of tricky play later on hmm hmm I said hmm I think uh You know, I think we might save the old forest. No, we may as well. May as well travel to it. Which readies... What's her face? Now, the orcs come down and attack us. And they get their shadow cards. Remember, the shadow cards are dealt to the creature with the highest threat first. Okay, so, what have we got here? We are going to... Oh, wait. Dogger Orc deals two damage to character committed to the quest from the first player. So let's just add two damage to Aragorn. Forgot about that forced effect. Always forget about that forced effect because it's not a treachery. And also, this guy had a force effect. He actually attacked for three, not two. But, of course, Denethor was defending at three, so there's no change there. So, now that I'm actually in the middle of a game, starting to play the game properly, instead of just fucking around like at the start, I'm starting to pay more attention. Okay. So, we are going to... Defend with. We're going to defend with uh, Eowyn against the Orc and Denethor against the Spider. Okay, so. Boom! Nothing doing. Okay, that gets discarded. And he attacks for two. She defends at one, which means she gets one wound. 
and click nothing happens attacks for two defends at three he gets no wounds then Aragon attacks for three to the orc which defends at zero and has three hit points so he gets three damage which of course kills him outright nice now I tap good old Gilloan and draw an extra card and now I can refresh all plus one threat we're in turn three we get plus one resource of course and then we tap and get two extra resources on our uh, Aragon guy okay so we actually have nothing in the staging area at the moment at all, no threat at all, which is pretty awesome. So, well, let's uh, dump out three resources from our spirit section and put out Civilian Scout or Lorian Guide. I should say. It's going to help us with our questing power. And let's actually, well, I may as well quest with Aragorn. So we're going to quest for four, five, six, seven. So we're questing for seven. Now, I'm not going to cast Protector of Lorien because basically I might need that law resource for something else and uh, at the moment there's only one card which is Steward of Gondor which I would like to discard and of course you can discard one card with Eowyn's ab ability so casting Protector of Lorien actually gives us nothing okay so we're questing for seven I pay one resource from Aragorn and untap him let's see what we get here Whoa. Each player must choose one character committed to the quest and remove that character from the quest. The chosen character does not ready. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually... There's, this guy is only at one. So, we, so I'm going to remove Aragon from the quest, but he's already readied because of his ability. So we are actually only questing for five versus one, which of course doesn't mean jack to us. So we get one progress token from the Lorien guide, and then we get four progress tokens from the actual quest. So that's one, two, three, four. We beat the old forest road, which gets discarded. And now, down comes the forest bats. Okay, so, F6, F6. Okay, so, What do I want to do here? I guess I am going to leave the bats undefended and defend with Denethor against the spiders. So we defend with Denethor against the spiders. Which, Shadow, a defending player must choose and discard one attachment he controls. That's uh, kind of frustrating. So let's send that to the top of the player discard. That's a very evil card. But he attacks with two, we defend for three, nothing happens. Now, undefended, click. And we get rid of the Chieftain Urak, or Thrak, or whatever, which is a real shame, because he's got four whole victory points. But there is no shadow effect. 
So only one damage. So we'll put that one damage on Denethor. I will now tap Aragorn and hit the spider for one, two, three damage, which of course kills it. I mean the bats, beg your pardon. Then I tap Thingo Face and draw a new card. Okay, awesome. Refresh all. Plus one threat. Everyone gets a resource. It is the next turn. And we draw a card. Okay. Well, this is quite cool. We have a Hammersmith. Uh, okay, this is interesting actually. If only I played that Protector of Lorien, I could have discarded that. Okay, this is interesting. I wouldn't mind playing the Scout so I could have a blocker, but it seems such a waste to play him when there's no land on the, on the map. So, but I think I'm uh, actually going to do that regardless. So I'm going to play minus two. Uh, what are we? Minus. Uh, You know, I, I, I guess I can play this guy. I'm going to go actually play... Uh, well, I'm going to play the Hammersmith. I'm going to take two law icons off and play out the Hammersmith. Now, that allows us to pick up our topmost attachment in our discard pile, which, of course, is our Steward of Gondor. Boink. And now, once again, we have zero threat in the staging area. So we're going to quest for one, four, and I may as well quest for two because we can ready him straight away. So once again, we're questing for seven. I, of course, pay one resource and ready him. Note that I did not play Steward of Gondor, and that's because I want to see if an expensive card, I mean, he's got a lot of resources on him for now. And I think Steward of Gondor might go better on uh, my spirit leader now. That's one of the cool things about this quest. Because there's all these discard attachments, you can actually use Hammersmith and Steward of Gondor to move it all around, to move Steward of Gondor to all your different heroes and just keep bringing it out of the graveyard and actually use that discard attachment supposedly bad effect to your advantage. Okay, so we're questing for seven. Let's draw another card. Don't be a monster for a change. Holy annoyance. And out comes another monster, which is only two threat, though. So that means we get a whole five quest points. One, two, three, four, five. Which means we've completed the first quest. So, this resolves immediately. 2A. As you move through Mirkwood, hounded by spiders, <laughs> yeah, and a couple of bats, uh, the forest path forks before you. Click. Unsure of what lies ahead, but spurned by the urgency of your message, you choose a path and proceed. Okay, so. Uh, scale. Oops. Shit. That was 
Okay, zoom 100%. Okay, so this guy attacks us as well. Draw the two shadow cards. 25. And I must exhaust one character I control when he got revealed. And of course I'm going to res exhaust uh, Glow. And it's a bit of a shame because I really wanted to use his cool ability. Okay, so. It's about time we got some of our heals out. I'm going to defend the King Spider with Denethor. Shadow, attacking enemy gets plus one. Okay, so he's attacking for four. We're defending at three, which means he gets one wound, which means he's almost dead. That's not good at all. And I'm gonna defend with the Hammersmith versus this spider. Click, which has no effect. Encounter discard. He's defending at one. He gets one wound, he's got three health, which is pretty cool. He's one of the very few characters in the core set that can actually take damage. It's pretty cool. Okay, so now I can attack for three. So... I think I'm going to attack for three and put two damage on the King Spider. Then I only need to hit the King Spider for two next turn. Okay, so refresh all, plus one, draw a card, plus one, turn, and everyone gets a resource. Okay, so here's a perfect example of why I held back with the Steward of Gondor. I now have the healer, which is vital to me being able to continue this game, I think. So what I'm gonna do is I'm, because I didn't play steward straight away, I can now minus two, oop, one, two, minus two of Aragon and play steward, this time on Denethor, which I can then tap and give him an extra two, which I can then minus one, two, three, and play out my healer which is pretty funky. Okay. Now, uh, let me pause it for a sec. I just wanna find a post on FFG. Okay, here's the post. This is posted by Zeb and it's, <coughs> be pardon, this is posted by Zeb and it's in the timing issues uh, thread, right? And this is actually an email that he received from Nate French, which is actually the game designer, assuming that Zeb isn't a big fat liar face and just made this up, which I sincerely doubt. But anyway, important. Player actions are not allowed at the end of each step as written in the rules, but after or between each step, okay? And that is pretty interesting. And furthermore, combat is resolved at the end of step four. Okay, or at the end of step three. Okay, so what does this mean? Hang on, let me pause it again. Okay, okay, so here we are on page 18 of the manual. You can see the individual steps of an enemy attack, which is four steps, which is what he was talking about in that mail. Okay, and three steps, okay? Now note, okay, that you can use an action between step three and step four. Now what this means is, and this is something a lot of people said to me was a rule mistake in my last vid, but it's totally not, is that You can flip a shadow card, say I flip a shadow card on this guy, and he gets plus one. After that shadow card is flipped, I can then tap her to heal before the damage is actually processed, okay? So that's in between those two steps. 
But just to clarify, 